Star Wars Battlefront. Many, many games in history have a massive trail of controversy follow them, but this one has been one hell of a doozy. With IGN flipping back and forth between loving it and hating it and the rest of the internet uh, not being entirely positive, it's been one hell of a ride. The beta is here now, so how does it stack up? Well, this is the wrong channel for a review, but stay tuned to see how it performs and stay subscribed if you're interested in more of these game benchmarking videos this holiday season. Intel brings DDR4 to the mainstream with their new Core i7-6700K and Core i5-6600K processors. Check the link in the video description to learn more. The surprisingly smooth experience of playing Battlefield was nice. I must say I was half expecting 60 or even worse 30 FPS frame cap, but it never came. Battlefront was actually running very well the whole time. I felt like I'd been transported to another world or something. And this is why we decided to benchmark the game, despite it being in beta. So yes, as I just said, the game is in beta, but the release date is coming up very soon, November 16th to be exact, and due to its performance being seemingly pretty well tuned, I kind of thought that we could give you guys some insight into the potential performance of this game. So without further ado, this is how I benchmarked it. This benchmark will be conducted on Survival Tatooine. The reason for this is that this is a predominantly multiplayer game, but multiplayer games are very rough to benchmark, so we want to do a single player segment. That being said, this single player segment isn't that amazing or consistent. Skip this cutscene, by the way. Um, but it's better than multiplayer. I do recommend running it about three times just to get a good score, though. Wait for Admiral Akbar to finish talking and kind of line yourself up with this particular pathway that should be basically right in front of you. Once Admiral Akbar is done talking, you'll see the kind of pie circle thing at the top. Right when that's finished, right when wave one begins, start your benchmark and start running forward. You'll see in the top kind of middle to the left area, there's a timer. That should actually perfectly line up with your benchmark. So when that hits two minutes, your benchmark should end. Follow this pathway up into the right down there where I was looking. They might spawn from there. They might also spawn from up here. They happen to spawn behind me this time. If they're not directly in your shooting path, do not shoot at them. So don't turn around to kill them. Uh, just follow this path up into the right and then curve around the corner to the right again. Up into the left, sorry, and then curve around the corner to the right. Um, one thing that I'm going to take time to talk about during this segment is that the game looks actually kind of really good. I like the amount of debris that's around. That's one thing that I appreciate a lot. The rocks that are everywhere. You'll see as we're walking up here, the rock kind of falls down and looks actually pretty realistic. It makes it feel like a more full environment, and I actually like that a lot. Take the right side up here. When you get up to this corner, um, they might start shooting at you. They might not. Depends on where they are, but don't shoot at them pretty much no matter where they are. This ramp, don't go down the ramp, go on the right side, but then kind of run off the ledge directly in front of you. Land on the half ledge, and then fall all the way down. Run to the end of this elevated path, go on the right side of the rock structure, and then as you're going on the right side, turn to the left and fall off the side. Run up the ramp here again, this is the same ramp they were running up near the beginning, but now they're going to be in front of you if you didn't kill them at the beginning, and you're going to want to kill them here. If you do clear the whole wave, wave 2 will spawn, but that is okay. If you don't clear the whole wave, like there, I left one enemy left alive, uh, they won't spawn and you're totally fine. Go along the same path that you went along before, and then you're basically just going to run this until the benchmark ends. So as you can see in the top left hand corner, I've got about 15 seconds left, and that should mean that the benchmark will probably end right on the corner up here. Now for graphics cards. Our NVIDIA product stack is pretty self-explanatory, but the AMD lineup seems a little wonko. Our Fury is out for replacement. If you check out this graphic from KitGru, we do have a pretty good representation of their product stack, but not perfect. Kind of close, but oh well. For Bonaire, we have a 260X, which will actually perform slightly better than the 360. For Pitcairn, we unfortunately don't have a proper replacement because we don't have a 265, but we just kind of slotted our 270 in there for good measure. Our 285 is a fairly strong representation of the Tonga category, but its main drawback is the two gigs of VRAM versus four. And then for Hawaii, we have both the old but crazy value R9 290 and the fancy new 390X, and then to cap things off as best as we could, we have the tiny little Fury Nano. 
So yeah, admittedly not perfect, but hopefully an okay representation of what the red team had to offer. And what was impressive though, and it actually pertains to this video properly, is that even cards like the 750Ti and 260X, which are like a hundred bucks and change on Newegg.com, were both able to run the game at 1080p with ultra settings at over 30 FPS. Drop those settings just a little bit or jump up to something like the 960 or 285 and you've got a really solid gaming experience for really cheap. In conclusion, for a pretty damn attractive looking game, Battlefront actually runs pretty smooth on a variety of setups and I never ran into any major issues. Feels weird to say it, but good job EA. Battle Nation is the place where you interact with other enthusiasts and vote on your favorite parts for a chance to win an awesome PC components. The contest will run for about six weeks, during which time there will be six individual week-long battles. Each battle features a different category like displays, graphics cards, mice, etc. By voting in each battle and interacting on the site, you earn points and climb the leaderboard. At the end of each week, the top 10 players are entered to win the highest voted product in that category. And by the end of of the six week competition, the top 50 players on the leaderboard will be entered to win the ultimate gaming PC featured in the top voted uh, components throughout the week's competitions. This week's battle is actually a double header with both mice and displays battling it out for your pick. Full details available on battlenation.com, linked in the video description. Thanks for watching guys, if this video sucked you know what to do, but if it was awesome get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our Amazon affiliate code to shop at, well, Amazon. Buying a cool t-shirt by the link in the description down below, or with a direct monthly contribution through the forum. Now that you're done doing all that kind of stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click that little button in the top right hand corner to check out this video where I benchmark the crew from Ubisoft.